We're looking at exercise for Praxit 5.21 where we have to swap the digit pairs. So we're going to write a method named swap digit pairs and it accepts a positive integer n as parameter and returns a new integer whose value is similar to n's but with each pair of digits swapped in order. So the easiest thing that we're going to do is first to write out this method. We know it's going to be a public method so we can call it it's going to be a return of an integer, and then it's called swap digit pairs. And then inside of here, we have int n, that's the integer we accept. And now we are, of course, inside of our method. So let's use this example. So if we call this and we pass this in, it would return this. Notice how these two values are swapped, the nine and six, these two values and swapped, the two and five, and then these two values are swapped, the four and eight. If the number contains an odd number of digits, we want to leave the leftmost digit in its original place. So we'll have to have a check for that. And then we have an example right here. We should solve this problem without a string. So to go through this, we're going to use a while loop. So the first thing that we want to do is have our return value. Let's do int and we will just call this value. This is the value that we're returning. We're originally going to set it equal to zero. This is going to be our returning value. Now, we want to have something that moves us on to the next thing. Because remember, we're going to be building a new number. So if we use something like this right here, what we're going to want to do is check like 9 and 6. So we'll do 6 and 9. And then after that, we move up and we'll check 2 and 5 and make that 5 and 2. So we'll just keep doing that. Well this is multiplying by like 10 then 100 then 1000 so my thought is let's just do an int next m for a next multiple and we'll originally set it equal to 1 so this is moving us to the next step now let's go into our while loop we will go through this entire thing so we have this number n and we're going to want to run through it as long as there's numbers inside of here Every single time we run through this, we are going to get rid of the 2 that we've already looked at. So but we'll just keep that in mind here. We'll do n is greater than 0. So now we are inside of here. We want to store this very last value. And how are we going to do this? Well, if we take the modulus of this by 10, we can get this very last value. So we'll do int, and then we're going to set current, which is a new variable that we're making, equal to n modulus 10. So we're basically dividing this by 10 and we're getting the remainder and we are storing it inside of here. Now after we do this, we want to have a smaller number. We don't need to look at the 6 anymore. So we're going to set our integer n divided by equal to 10. So that gets rid of that one. Let's check first if we have nothing left. That'll be the super easiest thing. So if our n is equal to 0 and this is and after we divide this, meaning this is our odd. So this is our odd circumstance. In the odd circumstance that this happens, like we have this right here, our n value is going to be zero, right? Because our current now holds this one, right? So if n is equal to zero, we're going to now be inside of here. And the reason why I need to be inside of here is because, well, we, there's nothing to swap it with. So all that we're going to do is we're going to have this value add whatever our current is just right here. And if we have all of these right here, it needs to multiply by this next m, which we will have in an else statement be incrementing every single time. So we will have our value, we'll do plus equals, and then we're going to have our next m be multiplied by our current value which is just the current. So then we can end this line. This is for if there's nothing else left for our odd circumstance. Otherwise, we can fall into an else statement. Inside of this else statement, we're going to want to get the next value, right? Because we know we have some next value. We'll do int current, and we'll just call it next for the current next value. And we'll set it equal to n modulus 10. The same thing that we did earlier just to get this value. Now we are going to want to 
add this in, right? So let's say we start from scratch here. We have this six. Well, the sixth thing uh, we're going to want to add in, we're gonna want to add this nine first. So the way we would do this is we can see that this nine is in a tenth position before our six. So we multiply our current uh, next by 10, or actually it should be the current by 10, right? Because we are swapping these. So we have this nine six. We want the six to go into the nines place. This six is 10 more than this nine place wise. So we're gonna to want to multiply this in. It's a little bit confusing, but basically we're gonna do our value plus equals two. We are going to have the current right here be multiplied by our next m, so this one right here, and then we're going to multiply it for this position by 10. And then to this we add this part right here, which is just going to be the current next multiplied by the next m, and then we're going to end that value. After we do this, we are want to get rid of this 9 right here, which we've done like previously up here. So since we have these two together, let's actually type these two together. We'll do n divided by equals to, and then we'll have this by 10. So these two are very similar. We can see to each other the operation that we're doing. And then after this, we need to kind of increase our m, right? Because we already done the ones place, the tens place, and now it's the hundredth place. So what we're gonna want to do is increase the next multiple. Inside of here, we're just going to do next times equals, we have our 100 here, and that should be it. So let's close our else statement, close our while loop. Once we're done here, we're just going to want to return our value. We can close our function, we can press oh. submit. Uh, we can't find the symbol next. Oh, I meant to do next m for next multiple. That's how we have it up here. And we can see we've passed 9 out of 9 tests. So that's how we would solve this problem using the following code that I've just explained. And we have our exercise 5.2 swap digit pairs.